Okay. Now, um, there's a website that you guys might want to look into once in a while. This is this will be good for your mental health. Okay. Now, this is from goodnewsnetwork.org. So this story is about India. And I'm gonna don't worry, stick stay with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna link it in just a second. But it says mega milestone. India connects 80 million rural households to water supply in just four years. Let's get it moist, people. Ha ha. All right. So gosh, this tab on the side is just blocking my reading. Jeez Louise. Okay. It says India's Aljivan mission of tap water success continues to be one of the great unsung stories of human development. Almost 79 million households have been provided with access to tap water connection since the program's launch in August of 2019, bringing the total to 111 million or 56% of rural households in the nation. Governance in India is a strange old dance between legislating on behalf of both economic areas similar to net worth to Western Europe and rural areas that are among the poorest in Asia. The Javan mission hopes to connect every household in the country to public water systems by 2024. The initiative faced disruptions during the pandemic, but from a starting point of just 32.2 million rural households, out of a registered 192 million, the program has seen remarkable success. That was the union minister of the merged ministries of sanitation and drinking water celebrating the accomplishment after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the mega milestone. In 2018, before Jajavan began, just 49.5% of the country had access to safely managed drinking water lowering even than neighboring Bangladesh. The accomplishment becomes all more, all the more remarkable when considering that during the course of Javan, India surpassed China as the most populous nation on earth. So this is a very beautiful story that just shows the power of truly investing in infrastructure, right? Like we could do so much. This is another, just talking about the same story. It talks about India provides 80 million rural households with tap water. So it says with 1.3 billion people and expected to increase to 1.7 billion by 2050, India is unable to provide safe clean water to the vast majority of its population. A severe lack of regulation, excessive privatization, remember remember when we talk about that? General negligence and ex extensive government corruption have resulted in many generations thirsting for more than a few drops of hazard-free water. However, in the Jiao Jivan mission, which started in August of 2019, brought hope to the country. Since then, about 79 million homes have gained access to tap water connection increasing the total to 111 million or 56% of rural households in the country. By 2024, the mission aspires to have connected a fam every family in the country to public water infrastructure. Despite disruptions during the, epi the epidemic, the program has achieved tremendous success starting base of only 32.2 million rural households out of a record of 192 million. So that is some good news is that more people will have access in their homes to clean drinking water. And this got me thinking about how we can start to keep hope in our minds when it comes to things like this. That think about, and I always think about like public transportation. Imagine, just imagine 
high speed rail and mass public transit free at the point of service. Meaning, if you want to go, let's say I want to go visit my family in Philly, right? I'm in Orlando, Florida. I'm going to visit my family in Philly. By plane, it takes two hours. By train, I think it takes between 18 to 24 hours. By train, right? So if a plane is going about 500 miles an hour in the air and it takes about two hours, right? If you had high-speed rail, and high-speed rail goes around 200 miles an hour, how about getting from Orlando to Philly in six hours? Six hours, right? That means stops along the way, right? That means, you know, it's around 200 miles an hour, give or take. You know, high-speed rail goes around that. Right, going up the coast, six hours. If you can jump on a rail, a high-speed rail, free at the point of service, and it's set, let's say you guys are in, let's say you're in Maryland, and you want to take a trip to Miami Beach, you, wanna, you guys want to go South Beach, and you guys take a six hour, would you take a six hour train ride? Especially if you didn't have to pay out of pocket? What, what, like how would that fare for you? What, would you do that? Wouldn't that be cool, right? Free at the point of service, you jump on a train, six hours, you know, that's just, look, you guys can watch three good movies in that time. You guys can watch like three, like a, a mini mar a marathon of just like three movies. Boom, boom, boom. And then next thing you know, like you guys can watch like Superman 1, Superman 2, and Superman 3. And then by that time, you're almost there with the Christopher Reeve Supermans. And then boom, you know. And you guys brought, you know, your floaties. You got your towels. You know, you got your stuff, you got your cooler, you're ready to go. And you guys wind up, boom. All you guys got to do is jump on the, the, the regular public transit, free at the point of service, get from the train station to right near the beach. Boom. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be lovely? Right? So you guys won't have to worry about that? What if you're, what if you're in, let, let's say it, it, where Nick is. And in Missouri, let's say he wants to go to Chicago. You know, he just wants to Chicago, go to Chicago and chill, right? It's just a couple of hours high speed train ride, free at the point of service. Boom, there. Wouldn't that be not? Wouldn't that be awesome? Like, what would you? Where would you go? Like, what would you do? Like, people, put in the chat, or if you're watching this on the rewatch, put in the comments. Where would you go if we had high-speed rail and mass public transit free at the point of service? What would you do? Like, what could you go? You know? I just would like to know because I think that's be so awesome. Like, like okay. Like, one of the things that I would do, I'd take a trip to Texas, right? I'd take a trip to Texas. Or I would take a trip. I would visit my peeps out in California. You don't think me and CJ wouldn't be out there at Long Beach chilling? <laughs> Listen to the Humpty Dance? Now stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. Oh, we'd be doing that. We'd be like this. Just bobbing our hairs to the beat. You know what I'm saying? That'd be something great, right? Just, let's just think about the possibilities, right? about what could be, man. Isn't it exciting when you start to think about the future that we could have once we push for the things that we actually would like? God, it would be amazing. You know? I'm just... I'm just trying to, you know... 
I'm just trying to get us to have that good feeling of what could be, you know? That's something that, I, you know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Rick Soli says, visit Chicago and New York and see my family. Yeah, man. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, I'm just a few hours away. Let me just jump on the train. Like, oh, what about work? You can literally lit like there, like we can still have public transit that gets out into rural areas. You can still live the rural life if that's what you was that's what that would you down for? Cool. And then, like, let's say, you know, there there is, you know, because it's free at the point of service and it's paid for through our taxation, and we allocate it as a society and then have the funds for that so that, let's say, you live out in a rural area in mass public transit. You know, it comes out once every hour. And let's say you want to get from there. And let, let's say you live in rural Wyoming, right? But you want to visit family in Nevada. Let's say you want to do that. Then you can actually be like, Oh yeah, I'll be out. I'll be down there in a couple of hours. Then you take that public transit to a high-speed rail hub. Boom! A few hours. One, two, skip a few. Ninety-nine, one hundred. Then you're there, and then you're seeing your family, and you don't even have to stay. You know, a, a whole week. You can come two, three times a month, and you can be more regular and see your fam. Or see your friends. How many of y'all would be down with me just coming by and visiting y'all, having some tea, just to chill and talk? And then it'd be like, all right, I'm gonna jump on the train. I'll sleep, you know, on the way back. Cause I gotta I gotta be at work in the morning. How cool would that be, man? You know what I'm saying? Spruce said, I I came to bring tasty trees. You know, I think that'd be great. CEB says, J but JB, that's socialism. We all know socialism is evil. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> little says, how we protect our trains from these tiny little space, invisible space balloons. Balloons are fun, man. I just don't like when they pop. But balloons are fun. Gamer says, I would travel more for sure. Yeah. I think humans have need the humans have the freedom of movement. I think that's something that we should have. And I think that would be great. Like, gamer, I would totally come and and look, why should I have to get on a, 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 a game console network to play games with you? I'm gonna come over to your house and sit right next to you, and we have both have our controllers and we're gonna game. Why not? Right? <laughs> you know, you may kick my ass, and that's okay. But you get to you get to brag right sitting right next to me instead of bragging online. You know, that yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, the jail mom is right. We can build it, we have the technology. I think this is something that we should do. Like just Think about it. Rapid transit gentrifies every neighborhood it touches. In capitalism, I'm not talking about in capitalism. I'm talking about changing and dismantling the system. I'm not talking about within a capitalist structure. That's not going to happen. It's never going to happen that way. But if we can have a structure that's more worker-centric, that's a different economic system that actually has us band together to appropriate funds instead of that surplus going to the top, that surplus from our labor that we designate, you know, through a democratic process actually goes and say, say, okay, we want this money to actually, instead of going to the top, because it's not really going to go to the top, it's actually going to go to the things that we designate through central planning. And let's say we actually have a more high-speed mass public transit that's free at the point of service. 
then yeah, some of that money, some of those funds are actually going to go towards these things that we actually want collectively as a society. I think that'd be really, really great. Wadi says it would be as life-changing as how the car or the train changed things up in the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. It's hard to wrap your head around it, though. Not going to lie. True. True. But guess what? It's still possible, right? Like years ago, we couldn't imagine having a device like this and being able to talk to other people on the other side of the world in real time. Now we can, right? All because we put satellites around the world and now we can position it. And now guess what? We can do that. So it may be a little bit harder to think about, to, to conceive in our minds, but we can still do it. Damn it, we're humans. We can adapt, we can evolve, we can do these things. I think, I think, I think, I think it can be done. And it's a lovely thought. Outside Steelers fan says. A lot of people look at that form of transit in a status way. Yes. And that's because it is our, it's our culture within this system, right? But if we get to a point where we don't see it as that anymore, if we can change the culture, because the economic system can change the culture. It can be a contributing factor to changing the culture, I should say then it will be so much better, right? Or even, we don't even have to go with transit. We can go to, what if you had, what if you actually had healthcare universally free at the point of service and it was nationalized? What would you do? Like, like me personally, number one, I would actually, you know, go and see my primary care more often and make sure to get my physical. And I would go see, and I would also have a primary care psychiatrist. And I would see them at least twice a year. Imagine everybody having a primary care psychiatrist and being able to see them just to check and see how we're doing mentally. Imagine. Right. Imagine if you didn't have to worry about housing, health care, food or education. Imagine if those things weren't an issue. Imagine. Then you can focus on other things. I'm not saying you're never going to have depression. I'm not saying you're never going to have different medical, mental ailments. It's still going to happen because humans aren't perfect. But the likelihood of them happening goes down because it's not exacerbated by this system. So I think that'd be kind of cool, right? So then you can be in a more better mood and you could be depressed about something. You may have lost a loved one or, or tragedy does still happen. You know, accidents still happen. You don't think that we're not, you know, and then you may be able to be like, oh, man, this accident happened, you know, a few months ago. It's still hurting me. But then you can get treatment for that. And the treatment is based on not for profit, but just making sure the person gets the most help that they can get so that they can be the healthiest. See? JB, business trips will be easy, too, not even on a personal level. Yeah. <laughs> Pete is ruining the mood. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hmm. CB, got to get some rest before work. Oh, okay. Take care, man. Good to see you. Um, and so, yeah, there's just some of the things. But I also have another good story that I want to share. Uh, I saw this on Twitter. And I told this person, 
I'm like, look, I'm going to share this too. Because this is some good news. Right? And let's share. Share the good news. Don't you know no good? Don't you know no good? All right. So, SLC Socialist shared this. This is pretty cool. It says, I never heard of the word afforestation. It's the opposite of deforestation. Afforestation is basically increasing the size of forests. Afforestation in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea a.k.a. North Korea, where the people, where are the people doing this in the rest of the world? I see it in China and now in the DPRK. President Biden, are we replenishing our forests? They are literally increasing the size of the forests in the DPRK. Isn't this so cool? Like, I want to see this. Imagine, imagine in your mind's eye, real quick. Let, 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 let me enlarge. Let, let, let me see. Imagine in your mind's eye, our Army Corps of Engineers, our soldiers in our military, right, with shovels, with uh, with heavy machinery, operating heavy machinery, the big, you know, excavators boring holes, and planting trees all over the United States. Just imagine, right? And then you have people who are in the Army Reserves going, oh, man, I'm enlisted. Oh, they're, we're doing another uh, we're doing another A4 station in this part of the country. And then they're like, all right, got to go. I got to plant some more trees. All right, cool. And then... When we see people in uniform, in military uniforms, we thank them for their service because they're doing a forestation in our country. Wouldn't that be, yo, wouldn't that be cool? That'd be so awesome, right? Because our war would be a war against climate change. That would be the war that we're fighting. And that would be the only war worth fighting right now, right? So you get them going to places like the Everglades and planting more, you know, uh, more native plants in that area in order to improve places like the Everglades or, you know, places like, you know, the, the flatlands, the prairies in the middle of the United States, in the Midwest. You know, I mean, there there was some people, and I'm not exactly sure uh, who told me this, but they said there used to be so many trees, especially in places like Florida, that you could not get into a space where there was no trees from one side of the coast of Florida to the other. There was that many trees in Florida. It was so many trees. Florida was actually a Spanish word for flowery because it was so much foliage in the state. And just imagine how much more we can do with our military if we were, instead of utilizing them for propping up corporations and extracting resources, what if we use them to insert resources into our country by planting seedlings and planting trees and planting, you know, all over our country? What if we use the Army Corps of Engineers to help build more ecological housing within our country? What if we did that? Hell, in Africa... People would downplay mud huts, but those are actually more eco economically and ecologically more feasible. What if we did it instead of by hand, we actually had, you know, 3D printers that use the mud that is used in mud huts in order to help build new housing so that they look modern, 
right? But they're built by the same materials that they used in African villages and in African people over there. So that it actually has a negative uh, environmental impact, not a negative environmental impact, but it has, it, ha it, it affects us in a positive way and it absorbs the CO2 and things like that. Like, like I'm just thinking about this stuff like that, right? Joe Joshua says, China is devoting a large part of their military to planting trees. Exactly! Like, yo, like, imagine kids being recruited into the military in our schools to just plant trees. Just imagine that. Just, I mean, crazy. <laughs> Ray Theon with trains just named the Ray Treon. Well, number one, it would change his name to Ray Treon. Number two, it would be, you know, worker operated and worker owned. In fact, hell, Raytheon wouldn't even exist because we wouldn't need military contractors. We wouldn't need any of them because it was just all be done by our government. They wouldn't even exist. You know? So the Indians had to burn out clearings so that everyone could eat. Not enough sunlight and grass for deer without help. System used to work. Beware of ambitious people. Yeah. But some of those engineers would have to be people who are indigenous that knew of their methods in order to create these systems so that we have a proper balance. And so couldn't we just you know, get some of the elders of the indigenous communities in order to consult and see how they did it. So we can do that same thing too. So we can live off the land just like the indigenous people did. I think that would be great. And get our lessons from them and implement it into our government policies. Wouldn't that be great? I want to borrow JB's rose-colored glasses. I'm sorry, but that's that's a little bit negative. And the thing is, is that we talk about the issues so much, and we talk about the problems so much. I'm trying to I'm trying to instill some hope right now into what could be, so that it fuels us into fighting against the system. That's what I'm doing. I'm sorry that you feel that I'm looking at this through rose-colored glasses. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to excite people into having an outlook for the future. Not just what's wrong, but what could we do to make it right so that we can have this type of future. I think that's important. I think it's really important for us to focus on the positive aspects. That's why I'm sharing stories like this. And how many people are sharing stories like this? How many? Because we have to aspire to something. Many times we have talked about people are voting against something. Like during the whole 2020 campaign. Oh, they're voting against something, not for something. Well, what are we fighting we know what we're fighting against, but what are we fighting for? I'm trying to show this is something that we can fight for. So I don't, I don't think it's rose-colored glasses. And I, I think that's unfair. I, I do. I think that what we can do is truly push for something that is aspirational while still, because we can walk and chew gum at the same time, right? You, you watch us at RBN. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. And couldn't it be that we can also condemn the system, direct our attention to ways to change the system, but also, you know, kind of dream a little bit, you know? 
can we can we dream and then can we work to fulfill that dream because look dr king did it right everybody talks about i have a dream speech we can still work towards that right can't we do the same you know and we can do that together because i know there's some hopes and dreams that you want to have that you know that you see that you're working towards and i want that for you and I think that's the thing, you know, I, I, it's like we want, like, bro, I want to have a future where we can vacation in Yemen. I want to be able to jump on a, on, on a ship and go and vacation in Palestine and Gaza and chill out with the people there. I want to be able to do that without having to worry about them suffering. In fact, they're having a festival in, in, in Gaza, and then I can go there, and I can, you know, chill out with the people there. Or I can go to the Solomon Islands, you know, and chill out with my peeps over there. And that's the thing that, I, I, I you know, I'm trying to do here. I, I know, you know, people are like, oh, this will never happen. But the thing is, is that it could. We just got to dream bigger. I just don't think we dream big enough. And I hope that we do. And that's one of the reasons why for, for the second part of the stream, for this for this segment, you know. So I hope that we can come to a consensus, you know, on being able to do that. That's all, you know, and, 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 I, and by no means I'm not trying to pick on you or anything like that. I just want that for for us. You know. <laughs> Mouse Day said, this is JB's I have a stream moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Hey, Indy. Subscribe to Indy Left. Good to see you, Indy. Make sure. Subscribe. But yeah. And I'm not going to spend too much more time. But yeah, I you know, I think there are things that we can, you know, work towards. You know? Um. You know why? Because all of you, all of y'all are worthy of it. You're worthy of having these things. You're worthy of having a future where you don't have to, like housing insecurity won't even come to mind. Food insecurity will not even be a possibility. All water, unless it's flushed down the toilet, is clean. Unless it goes down the drain, it's clean water. You know? What about, you know, having projects where we actually aspire towards, oh, man, we're doing a more afforestation in these different areas, you know? I just, I just think that's something that we can work towards, and I, and I think it's good to talk about these things to think about them, because you are worthy of it. You're worthy of having complete health care. You're worthy of having peace whenever you walk out on the street, no matter who you are, unless you're some greedy person then we need to re-educate you because like that greed just needs to, that can foster some ugly things. But yeah. I agree, long-term plan, but ending borders would, could, would be nice. I agree, that would be pretty cool. 